Off the path of an unremarkable village is the stronghold of a legendary master smith. Rumors has it that the treasures from his time still reside in the stronghold and only those who are daring enough may lay claim to its riches. Will you be among those who manage to plunder this great stronghold? The Forge of Fury by Richard Baker was originally published in the year 2000 as an adventure for the third edition of Dungeons and Dragons. The adventure was published shortly after the Sunless Citadel and was designed as a standalone adventure that follows it. I will be covering the version found in Tales of the Yawning Portal as the story is largely the same. Join me as we explore the story found in Dungeons and Dragons The Forge of Fury. Chapter 1 Starting the Adventure Durgadin was a master smith who forged blades of surpassing quality and power. Centuries ago, his home was sacked by orcs. Durgadin led the remnants of his clan to the mountains north of the town of Blassingdale and established a small secret stronghold somewhere in the trackless wilderness. From his hidden redoubt, he waged a decades-long vendetta against all orc kind until his enemies discovered his fortress and attacked it after a long siege. Durgadin and his followers perished, and much wealth was carried away by the conquering hordes. It's said that the deepest and best hidden vaults and armories escaped the looting. You've come to Blassingdale, a small mining town on the northern frontier to see if there's anything to these stories. Your map shows that the Old Dwarf Hold lies about three days march to the north of the town. You spend time interacting with the townsfolk of Blassingdale, gathering equipment and provisions before you set forth to the location on the map. As you travel north from the mining town of Blassingdale, you pass through brooding pine forest and deep vales. From where you stand now, you catch sight of a tall steep hill that rises to a prominent bare knob of rock, the Stone Tooth. A thin spire of smoke rises from some unseen point high on the hill's slope, and you can make out a steep narrow road that runs back and forth across the face of the mountainside. You decide to follow the narrow road and, after some time, you manage to trek up the steep hill. Chapter 2 The Mountain Door the path climbs up one last steep switchback toward a bare shoulder of rock. The hillside rises steeply on your right and drops away precipitously on your left. Debris and rubbish lie scattered over the last hundred yards or so. Up ahead, the path opens onto a wide ledge and then doubles back sharply into the mountainside. Two orcs in hide armor stand watch on the ledge. They appear inattentive and bored. Taking this opportunity, you sneak past the orcs as they are distracted by their conversation. Afterwards, you find shallow steps that lead up through the steep fissure to the south and turns east into the mountainside. Here, a broad entranceway has been carved out of the stone. Marble steps cracked with age and veined with green moss lead up to a strong double door of carved stone. You find the doors to be open and sneak your way into the complex. Now, you are inside the stronghold known as Kundrakar. Once you enter, you look around and find the area to be a natural cavern. You explore the lair, fighting through hordes of orcs and the many traps they lay. Eventually, you find a room containing grand stairs. The ceiling soars 30 feet high in the center of this impressive chamber, and the walls are carved with images of dwarves at their forge. In the center of the floor, a natural rift descends sharply. Dozens of stone steps lead into the darkness. You can hear the distant sound of running water and a curious buzzing coming from far below. Following the sound, you descend the stairs and further into Kondrakar. Chapter 3 The Glitterhame The stairway twists and turns a long way downward. The floor has been cut into several hundreds of shallow steps, but the walls and ceilings are still natural rock. Further down, a rushing stream spills from a narrow crack to the south and crosses the stairway, disappearing into a narrow winding tunnel to the north. This is Glitterhame, a large series of natural caverns in the heart of the Stone Tooth. The caverns are beautiful. The walls sparkle and glisten with flecks of semi-precious stone, and millennia of sculpting and erosion by water have created sheets of fluted flowstone, delicate stalactites, and majestic stalagmites. Water streams down the caverns toward an underground river far below. The Glitterhame is now home to a band of troglodytes, dangerous reptilian savages that hunt underground places. You traverse through the Glitterhame, battling through the myriad of dangerous creatures that inhabit this cavern. During your travel, you find the entrance into the further layer of Kondrakar. 
Cut into the cavern wall is a small but strong looking door of iron plates, about 5 feet tall and 4 feet wide. Heavy rivet studded surface and a tarnished silver rune, Durkadin Smith Mark, gleams on the door's rusted face. You try to open the door but find it sealed shut with a lock. Figuring a key must be hidden somewhere, you continue with your exploration of the cavern. You decide to follow the river that flows within the cavern and it takes you to a chamber. The thunderous roar of falling water fills this long, low chamber and spray makes everything slick and wet. A fast stream rushes through the center of the cavern, emerging from beneath a crude damn rock and mud in the western wall. The stream disappears into a dark shaft at the cavern's end. A rough, winding path follows the stream towards the east. With no other clues as to where a key may lie in this cavern, you enter the winding path deeper into Kondrakar. Chapter 4 The Sinkhole As you emerge from the winding path, you find a loud waterfall that spills down the northwest wall of this cavern into a deep pool. The rocky walls glisten with spray, and a weird array of colorful minerals lend an unearthly beauty to this spot. Here, the river above joins a subterranean river that traverses dark caverns and a forgotten storeroom. None of the monsters that inhabit the complex regularly visit this place. You'd venture through the storerooms that once belonged to dwarves and face off against the oozes that lie within. After digging through the storerooms, you go back to the cavern and spot a set of stairs leading off in the east end of this layer. The rock stairs climb steeply, turn north, and then descend toward the east into a cavern very much like the one you just left, but smaller. A ledge along the river continues east to a door on the north wall, and the rushing river separates you from a ledge on the southern side. A large, strange-looking stalagmite stands in the middle of the southern ledge. A cavefish flops helplessly on the bank nearby. A strand extends from the stalagmite with a thrashing cavefish in its grasp and pulls the fish toward the rock formation. Then, a fang-filled maw gapes open in the stalagmite and devours the fish in one bite. It is a roper. You leap forward and attack the roper, attempting to slay it. While difficult, you manage to pull it off and head north into a prison cell holding the corpse of a dwarf. Upon inspecting the skeletal remains, you find a key and figure it must be for the door found in the Glitterhain. You exit the prison, head back to the waterfall, and up the winding path into Glitterhain. Afterwards, you head back to the door you found earlier and unlock it. On the other side of the door is a steep staircase in which you step through and descend further down into Kondrakar. Chapter 5 The Foundry The stairs end at the entrance to an octagonal chamber. The floor is inlaid with cracked dusty blue tiles and the walls are dressed with polished marble. Large doors of iron-bound oak exit to the northwest and northeast. Three cast bronze statues, almost 10 feet tall, stand by the west, north, and east walls. Each depicts an armed dwarf. The ceiling rises in a dome almost 30 feet above the floor. From somewhere in the distance, you can hear the faint ringing of a hammer on anvil. Through a bit of investigation, you determine that there is a hidden door behind the east statue and push past the statue. You open the hidden door and make your way down a set of stairs. In doing so, an alarm rings out, alerting the inhabitants of your intrusion. Once you emerge, you find an enormous hall that is lined with ten great pillars. Each pillar is carved into the form of giants and dragons that support the vaulted ceiling high above. The walls were once covered with tile mosaics, but they have been smashed and defiled by graffiti. Tiny fragments of tile litter the floor. In the room, you can see five other exits and a small fire accompanied with some sleeping sacks. The sound of hammers ringing on iron comes from beyond the doors to the south. Suddenly, a harsh voice calls from the shadows of the pillars. Go back the way you came. This is the only warning you'll get. Here, you find three Duergar standing watch. The Duergar that called out to you goes by the name of Garrod. The Duergars down here are currently engaged in a secret project, hoping to forge a blade just as powerful as Durgadin did centuries ago. With a bit of finesse, you are able to negotiate with Garrett to allow you passage through the lair. She notes how most of the halls are infested with the undead and cursed magic, and informs you of a dragon that lies in the lake below that guards a hoard of treasure. Catching your interest, you ask her more about the dragon, and she offers to take you to the entrance of the lake as long as you leave them be. Accepting her aid, she guides you through the lair to a chasm next to a waterfall. You can see nothing but darkness below, 
although the splashing of waters deep below is barely audible over the roar of the waterfall. Spotting an old chain ladder nearby, you can use it to carefully descend into the depths of the chasm. Chapter 6 The Black Lake As you descend the ladder, you find a fast-moving underground river that roars from east to west under a stone bridge. The bottom of the chain ladder is near the south bank of the river. On the north side of the bridge, a ledge continues to the east. You follow the rickety bridge across the river to the ledge and find another bridge. The dilapidated bridge leads to another ledge that winds southeast alongside a very large lake, apparently the source of the underground river. The cavern is quite large. The lake's far shore is lost in shadow, and the echoes of water seem to indicate a very sizable cave. Observing the lake, you catch a glimpse of a serpentine form moving in the darkness. Suddenly, the head of a young black dragon slips above the water, spews acid towards you, and then retreats in the lake to do it once more. This young black dragon goes by the name of Nightscale, and a battle has commenced between the two of you. You fight Nightscale and manage to seriously injure her. In doing so, she retreats into the water and makes a swift escape, fearing her death. You continue along the shore and find that a short distance offshore sits a small isle. Stalagmites thrust up at the ceiling above, and the dark waters lap quietly at its shore. Several spots on its surface glimmer even in the gloom, suggesting the promise of treasure to be had. You travel to the isle and find it filled with the treasure collected by Nightscale. You take what you can and travel back to the surface, your pockets filled with the riches of a young dragon's hoard. Hello everyone! I hope you enjoyed the video of the story found in the Forge of Fury. Eventually I'll get to the rest of the Yawning Port adventure, so if there's one you want me to cover, don't worry, I'll get to it eventually. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks!